Hey everybody, AJ here. In today's video, I'm gonna give you my top five tips for amateurs starting out with DaVinci Resolve. I've been using Resolve now for about six or seven months and I'm by no means an expert, but I've definitely learned a trick or two along the way and that's what I wanna share with you today. The version of Resolve we're gonna be using is DaVinci Resolve 17, which is still in public beta, but in my experience, it's been extremely, extremely stable. So if you wanna download and try it out, I'll put the link in the description down below. The first tip I wanna give you is how to create a video template. If you're using the same graphics, sounds, animations in all your videos, instead of having to manually load them every time you create a new project in DaVinci Resolve, I find it way easier to have this automated by having everything preloaded into a video template. You can see here on my screen that I have the untitled project to start a brand new project from scratch. I've got the latest video that I've been working on, which was on the Surface Pro benchmarking. The video template is essentially an untitled project, but with my graphics, sounds, and animations already loaded into it. So I'm gonna teach you how to create one of these video templates for yourself now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a brand new untitled project. We're gonna head over to the edit tab just because I'm used to working in this view. And now we're gonna import some graphics from our file explorer. You're jumping over to my file explorer. You can see I've got everything neatly organized into a few different folders here. I've got my subscribe and my like notification buttons. I've got my ending video, my graphics and my icons. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna replicate these folders into DaVinci Resolve. So in Resolve, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna add a bin, and we'll call this subs and likes. So we're gonna have a subs and like, we're gonna add another bin, we're gonna call this graphics and icons, music and sounds. So you can see I'm replicating the folder structure name, what's in my OneDrive, and I'm replicating that over into DaVinci Resolve. So now I'm gonna open up my subs and likes folder and the exact same in my file explorer. And now I'm just gonna control A, I'm gonna select everything, and then I'm gonna drag it over to DaVinci Resolve. And you can see here, I've now just dropped in all my subs and my like videos. Let's jump back to the master folder, jump back to the master folder in our file explorer. Let's look at our graphics in our icons. Open up graphics and icons in DaVinci Resolve. Select everything. Again, drag and drop into DaVinci Resolve. And do the same for music and sounds and the same for our ending clips. So if we look at the master of DaVinci Resolve here, if we go to our subs and likes, we now have all our subs and like videos. Scroll down to our graphics and icons. Same with music and same with endings. What we're gonna do now is go file and then we're gonna save project as and then we're gonna call this our new video template. We're gonna hit save, and the next time we, you launch into DaVinci Resolve, instead of selecting Untitled Project, you actually wanna open up your new video template, and you can see once it loads, we have our subs and our likes, our graphics, everything's already preloaded in here. What I recommend as a rule of thumb is going File, and then going Save Project As, and labeling it the project that you're working on. So we can actually call this project our Top 10 DaVinci Resolve Tips. That way when you start importing footage, you don't accidentally import or overwrite your template video. Tip number two is generating optimized media. If you're working with a lot of media such as 4K files or even a lot of 1080p videos, your computer may struggle to render or play these back smoothly and this can be really, really annoying when you're trying to edit your video. Luckily, DaVinci Resolve has made this easy with something called optimized media, which will compress the files you're working on for smoother playback but it gives you full fidelity and quality when you finalize your video. I'll show you right now how to generate optimized media. I'm gonna grab this video file here, drop it into our timeline, and then I'm gonna select both the video and the audio, right click, and if I scroll up, you'll see there's an option here for generate optimized media. I'm gonna select on generate optimized media. Depending on how powerful your PC is and how much media you have, this might take some time. So go grab yourself a cup of coffee and take a break. It'll be worth it once it's done. Tip number three is aligning video based on their audio waveform. If you're using multiple cameras, such as the camera that I'm using right now to record, my iPhone to record B-roll, and possibly a microphone such as the one connected to my PC, to get the audio and the video to sync up perfectly can be a little bit tricky, which is where DaVinci Resolve's auto line makes it really easy and simple to work across multiple cameras. All right, so you can see we've imported our tip three video, our tip three B-roll, and our tip three audio. And now I'm just gonna drag these into our timeline in no particular order. 
selecting all of these here, both the audio and the video clips, we're gonna right click, scroll up to where it says auto align clips, and then we're gonna select auto align based on waveform. DaVinci Resolve is gonna analyze the content and it's gonna align the video and the audio based on the matching audio waveforms. You can see here now we have a tail at the front and the back end of the video clips. But if we look at the waveform, they're pretty much identical throughout the three clips here. I like to tidy at the tail end of both clips. So I select on the front tail and then I just delete random bits at the front. I do the same for the back, control B, delete. And now we have three perfectly aligned clips. To show you that the audio and the video is synced up, I'm actually just gonna hide video track number two. I'll rotate this around for you. And you're gonna see the audio and the video are gonna be perfectly aligned. And this is actually using the video from my camera, the video from my iPhone, and the audio from my microphone. Which is where DaVinci, which is where DaVinci Resolve's auto align makes it really simple and easy. Pretty cool and extremely easy, right? What I'm gonna show you now is how to tidy up the rest of your timeline so you continue editing and it's much neater and easy to work with. Because we don't actually want tip three B-roll audio or tip three video audio, we wanna actually delete those from the timeline completely. If we just select on the audio itself though and hit delete, it's also gonna delete our video. So let's control Z and undo that. We just wanna select specifically on tip three audio track number one. To do this, I'm gonna actually hold the Alt button and select this tip three video audio track. This is gonna allow me to select the audio only with leaving the video part intact. I can hit backspace and that's gonna delete the audio. Same thing for audio track number three. We're gonna hold the Alt key and select on tip three B-roll and we're just selecting on the audio component, hitting the backspace button, and that's gonna delete the audio component, but again, leaving the video track intact. And we also don't need video number two because this was just a screen recording, but we wanted to keep the audio. So if I select on tip three audio, it's gonna pick both the video and the audio up. We wanna keep the audio, but delete the video. So we're gonna hold the Alt key, select on tip three audio, the video track, and now we're gonna hit backspace. So now we have our A roll, our B roll, and the right audio from our microphone. So you can start editing. It's much easier and needed to work with. And we've auto aligned the clips, so the audio and the video are gonna come out perfectly. Tip number four is how to grab a screenshot in DaVinci Resolve. I personally think there's too many steps here and they could streamline the process in a later update. But for now, I'll show you the couple of steps it takes to grab a screenshot. What you wanna do is find the image that you wanna capture. We're gonna use this random spot in the timeline just for the example. Scroll down to the tabs and next to the Fusion tab, you have the option of the color wheel. You're gonna select on color and this is gonna take you to the color portion of DaVinci Resolve. If you're happy with that screenshot that you wanna grab, simply right click on the photo, select on grab still. It will appear as a still image in your gallery and then you're gonna to have to select that still image, right click and then scroll down to where it says export. Lastly, you wanna pick where you're gonna export the files to, give it a file name, and pick what kind of file type you wanna export it as. The default is .dxp, but you can choose from the drop-down menu any image file type you like, such as JPEG, PNG, or a few others. The last tip I wanted to give you for today is how you can easily and manually reposition items along the screen. DaVinci Resolve does give you the transform option on the right-hand side where you can adjust the zoom and position, but I find sometimes it's way easier and more natural just to drag and drop and resize items with the cursor. Say for example, I wanted to put in a subscribe notification on top of this video here. I'm gonna grab the subscribe notification, I'm just gonna drop it into the timeline, and you're gonna see it's right in the center of the screen here. I can use the position here on the right-hand side to move it around, but I find that a little bit cumbersome. So what I recommend doing instead is scrolling down to this little square just under your playback video and it says transform. If you drop the arrow down, you have a few different options here, but we're gonna work with transform for now. When I select transform, you see I actually get a square around the subscribe notification and now with the mouse, I can move it around the screen. I can grab a corner and I can resize it and you'll see as I'm moving this around to where I want it to be, the zoom and the position in the transform section are automatically updating with the correct coordinates. And there you have it. Those are my top five tips to speed up your video editing in DaVinci Resolve. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. Thanks for watching, happy creating, and I'll see you next time. Bye.